Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. It's an immense joy to share God's Word with each of you today. Before we dive into today's topic, I'd like to make a special request. If this message touches your heart and builds up your life, please help us spread this word of hope. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to leave a comment sharing your reflections. Your participation is crucial for us to reach more people with the transformative message of the gospel. Today we'll explore a crucial theme for our Christian walk, the fruits of the Spirit. Based on Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23, we'll delve into the depths of these divine attributes that should characterize our lives as followers of Christ. Paul tells us, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. These words are not just a list of desirable qualities, but a call to a life transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's discover together how we can cultivate and manifest these fruits in our daily lives. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Before we dive into each fruit individually, it's crucial to understand what Paul meant by fruit of the Spirit. Note that he uses the word in the singular, fruit, not fruits. This suggests that all these attributes form a unified set, a holistic expression of Christ's character in us. The fruits of the Spirit are not mere qualities that we can develop on our own, like following a self-help program. They are supernatural manifestations of the presence and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we allow God to work in us, these fruits naturally sprout, transforming our character into the likeness of Christ. It's important to emphasize that these fruits are not optional for Christians. They are visible evidence of a life surrendered to the Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, By their fruit you will recognize them. Our character and behavior should reflect the reality of our faith. Love, the foundation of all fruits. Love is the first and most fundamental of the fruits of the Spirit. It's no accident that Paul mentions it first. This love, in Greek agape, is not a superficial or fleeting feeling, but a deep and sacrificial love, reflecting God's own love for us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul eloquently describes the characteristics of this love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This is the type of love we should cultivate in our lives. It's a love that manifests itself in concrete actions, not just words. It's a love that forgives 70 times 7, as Jesus taught. It's a love that extends even to our enemies, as we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. When we truly love, we are fulfilling the greatest commandment given by Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39. This love is the foundation upon which all other fruits of the Spirit develop. Joy, rejoicing in all circumstances. Christian joy is not a superficial happiness based on favorable circumstances. It's a deep and lasting joy, rooted in the certainty of God's love and the hope we have in Him. It's the joy that remains even in the midst of tribulations. The Apostle Paul writing from prison, exhorts the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, Rejoice. Philippians 4.4 4. This joy transcends our circumstances and strengthens us even in the midst of adversity. It's not a denial of reality, but an unshakable confidence in God's character and promises. Nehemiah 8.10 reminds us that the joy of the Lord is your strength. When we cultivate this joy, we find strength to face life's challenges. 
It's a joy that manifests itself in praise, gratitude, and hope, even when circumstances seem adverse. Peace. Tranquility in the midst of the storm. The peace that the Spirit produces in us goes beyond the mere absence of conflict. It's an inner peace that sustains us even in the midst of life's turbulence. It's the peace of God which transcends all understanding, as Paul describes in Philippians 4, 7. Jesus promised, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. This peace allows us to face life's challenges with serenity, confident that God is in control. The peace of the Spirit doesn't mean the absence of problems, but the presence of God amid problems. It's the calm in the eye of the hurricane, the tranquility that comes from knowing that, as Paul states in Romans 8, 28, in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Patience. Perseverance in the face of trials. Patience, or long-suffering, is the ability to endure difficult circumstances without giving up or losing faith. It's a quality that reflects God's own patience with us. As Peter reminds us in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The book of James encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1, 2-3 Patience is not passivity, but an active and confident waiting in God's timing and will. This patience manifests itself in our interpersonal relationships, in our response to injustices and in situations where we need to wait for divine intervention. It's the patience that allows us to bear with one another in love. Ephesians 4, 2 Kindness, gentleness in action. Kindness manifests itself through acts of goodness and consideration towards others. It's a practical expression of God's love, demonstrated in our daily interactions. It's the gentleness that makes the strong truly strong. Paul exhorts the Ephesians, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you, Ephesians 4.32. Kindness reveals itself in gentle words, in acts of compassion, and in the willingness to put others' needs above our own. Jesus is the supreme example of kindness. He welcomed the marginalized, touched the untouchables, and spoke tenderly to the brokenhearted. His kindness attracted people and opened doors for life transformation. Goodness, the active virtue. While kindness refers more to our attitude, goodness manifests itself in concrete actions. It's the desire and willingness to do good to others, even when it requires personal sacrifice. Goodness is love in action. Jesus is the supreme example of goodness. The Gospels show us how He constantly did good, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and comforting the afflicted. In Acts 10.38, we read that Jesus went around doing good. Goodness is not limited to great heroic acts. Often, it manifests itself in the small things of everyday life, a smile for someone who is sad, a word of encouragement for someone who is discouraged, or practical help for someone in need. As Paul exhorts us in Galatians 6.10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Faithfulness. Constancy in commitment. Faithfulness is the quality of being trustworthy and loyal, both in our relationship with God and with people. It's keeping our commitments and promises, even when it's difficult. Faithfulness is a reflection of God's character who is faithful and just. 1 John 1 9. The book of Proverbs reminds us, Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find? Proverbs 26. In a world where commitments are easily broken and promises often forgotten, the Christian's faithfulness should stand out. 
faithfulness manifests itself in the constancy of our devotion to God, in loyalty in our relationships, in integrity in our business, and in perseverance in our mission. Jesus praises this quality in the parable of the talents, saying to the faithful servant, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Matthew 25, 21. Gentleness is not weakness, but strength under control. It's the ability to respond with kindness even when provoked, to exercise authority without arrogance. It's a quality that Jesus exalts in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5, the 5. Jesus described himself as gentle and humble in heart, Matthew 11 and 29. His gentleness did not prevent him from confronting injustice or speaking the truth boldly, but he always did so with love and compassion. Jesus' gentleness was powerfully manifested when he washed the disciples' feet, an act of humble service performed by the King of Kings. Gentleness allows us to receive instruction and correction with humility. James exhorts us, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. James 1-21 Self-control is the ability to control our impulses, desires, and emotions. It's fundamental to living a life that pleases God and witnesses Christ to the world. Self-control is not repression, but the ability to direct our energies and desires according to God's will. Peter exhorts us, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. 2 Peter 1-5-6 Self-control is essential to resist temptations and live a disciplined life. Paul compares the Christian life to a race, emphasizing the importance of self-control. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27 Cultivating the fruits of the Spirit. Although these fruits are the work of the Holy Spirit in us, we have an active role in their cultivation. We need to create an environment conducive to the growth of these fruits in our lives. How can we do this? 1. Abide in Christ. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. John 15:5. Our constant connection with Christ is essential for the production of spiritual fruits. 2. Prayer and study of the Word. Constant communion with God through prayer and diligent study of His Word aligns us with His will and transforms us. As Psalm 1 says, The man who meditates on the law of the Lord is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. 3. Fellowship with other believers. The church is the body of Christ, where we can grow together and encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 24-25 exhorts us, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. 4. Constant Practice just as a musician perfects their art through daily practice, we too must daily exercise these fruits in our lives. Philippians 4, 9 encourages us, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Every situation in our life is an opportunity to practice and develop the fruits of the Spirit. 5. Repentance and Humility Recognizing our failures and genuinely repenting keeps us humble and open to the work of the Spirit. James 4, 6 reminds us that God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humility allows us to recognize our dependence on God and our continuous need for growth. 6. 
submission to the Holy Spirit. Paul exhorts us in Galatians 5.16, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Submitting to the Spirit implies being attentive to His guidance, sensitive to His conviction, and promptly responding to His impulses. 7. Perseverance in Trials James 1, 2-4 teaches us. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Life's difficulties are opportunities for the growth and maturation of the fruits of the Spirit in us. The Impact of the Fruits of the Spirit when we manifest the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, we not only become more like Christ, but we also profoundly impact the world around us. Let's consider some of the ways this happens. 1. Powerful Testimony Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. When we demonstrate love, joy, peace, and the other fruits of the Spirit, we give a living and powerful testimony of our faith. Our actions speak louder than our words. 2. Transformation of Relationships The fruits of the Spirit have the power to revolutionize our relationships. Imagine the impact on a marriage when both spouses practice sacrificial love, patience, kindness, and self-control. Or consider how peace and gentleness can transform a tense work environment. 3. Positive influence on society. As salt and light of the world, Matthew 5, 13-16, we are called to exert a positive influence on society. When we manifest the fruits of the Spirit in our social interactions, at work, at school, or in the community, we contribute to building a more just, compassionate, and harmonious society. 4. Healing and Restoration The fruits of the Spirit have a healing and restorative power. Love heals emotional wounds. Joy lifts up the downcast. Peace calms the anxious. Patience endures the difficult. Kindness reaches the rejected. Faithfulness restores trust. Gentleness disarms the hostile. And self-control prevents unnecessary conflicts. 5. Glory to God Above all, when we manifest the fruits of the Spirit, we glorify God. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Our transformed life is a living testimony to the reality and power of God. 6. Church Growth a church characterized by the fruits of the Spirit is attractive and welcoming. People are naturally drawn to a community where there is genuine love, contagious joy, deep peace, and sincere kindness. This contributes to the numerical and spiritual growth of the church. 7. Inner Peace and Satisfaction We can't forget the impact that the fruits of the Spirit have on our own lives. We experience inner peace and deep satisfaction when we live in harmony with God's character. As Paul observes, against such things there is no law, Galatians 5.23. In other words, a life characterized by the fruits of the Spirit is a life of true freedom and fulfillment. Overcoming Obstacles It's important to recognize that cultivating the fruits of the Spirit is not always easy. We face both internal and external obstacles. Internally, we struggle against our sinful nature. Paul describes this conflict in Galatians 5:17. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Externally, we face pressure from a world that often doesn't value or understand these spiritual qualities. We may be ridiculed for our gentleness, exploited for our kindness, or tested in our patience. However, let's remember Paul's encouraging words in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 
God is committed to our growth and transformation. He doesn't give up on us, even when we stumble. When we fail to manifest the fruits of the Spirit, and we all fail sometimes, we shouldn't be discouraged. Instead, we should turn to God in sincere repentance, trusting in His grace and power to lift us up and continue growing. Conclusion Dear brothers and sisters, may we daily seek the manifestation of these fruits in our lives. Let's remember that it's not by our own effort that we produce them, but by the gracious work of the Holy Spirit in us. As Paul reminds us in Philippians 2, 13, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. As we grow in these fruits, we become a living testimony to God's transforming power. May the world see Christ in us through the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that we demonstrate. May we, like Paul, be able to say, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20 May our life be a faithful reflection of Christ's character, a living demonstration of the fruits of the Spirit. If this message touched your heart, I invite you to continue with us on this journey of spiritual growth. Don't forget to subscribe to the Blessed Messages for You channel like this video and leave a comment sharing how the fruits of the Spirit have manifested in your life or in which areas you'd like to grow more. Remember, spiritual growth is a journey, not a destination. Each day is a new opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit in us. May we be open to His transforming work in our lives. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.